Okay, uh, so welcome to our second lab. So before I start our second lab, um, I just want to show you that how we can <laughs> collect Twitter data one more time. Uh, last week, I didn't show it very clear uh, because I was I used an ex existing connection to my Twitter account. Uh, so many of you are asking that how can create a new uh, connection if you don't have one. Uh, so in the current uh, Ripe Miner version 9.7, so what you can do is that you can go to connections and you can actually create a connection. And then you can see you can choose a connection type. Well, that is so the Ripe Miner now support more and more connection types. Uh, so let's say we want to collect Twitter data. And you can choose, okay, where do you want to save your connection? So you can save that to your uh, local repository. And if you have a cloud repository, you can also save that one to your cloud repository. And I just call it Twitter connection and say create. And then I go to this interface. Again, this is something new in 9.7. So I remember that last year when I do the lab, I, I didn't see this interface. Uh, so here they are asking the access token. So you need to click this button, and you need to request access token. So this is where you need to log in with your uh, Twitter uh, Twitter account. You have to log in your Twitter account before you request that token. Once you log in, you click that button, and you can authorize the app. And then you have this number. And you can copy and paste that code. And you can complete. Let's test. OK, that was success. And you can save it. OK, uh, so now you can see you have a Twitter connection. Uh, so if now I uh, double click our previous um, process, so for the search tweet, uh, so let me disable that one and also in the, enable this one. And see here if I can find out my Twitter token. So I, if I go to repository, uh, connections, and Twitter connection. OK. And now if I want to search the uh, 100 popular tweet that talking about GMU, and see if I can do that. OK, so perfect. I don't have 100, but I, I have at least uh, 15. OK. 15 uh, tweets that are talking about Jamie at this time. All right, uh, so now you can save this uh, process. And you can see your, your connection is there. So next time, if you want to click new single tweets, and you can come here and use that connection. All right, so let's go back to our uh, this week's lab. So this week, we're going to talk about how to uh, explore, visualize, and also clean the data uh, by using Ripe Miner. So, again, if you have taken my uh, data visualization class, you will see that uh, Ripe Miner provide Ripe Miner provides some very similar functions as Tableau did. Okay, however, Tableau is more powerful in terms of data visualization. Uh, Ripe Miner is more like a machine learning tool. Um, they just provide some very nice and also basic uh, data visualization functions. But those are, I think, are sufficient uh, for our class and also for most um, scenarios. Uh, so uh, if you click the URL in the, in the instructions, so where you can download the data, so that will direct you to my uh, GitHub repository. And you can see here I have a lot of uh, tutorials that previous tutorials so, so so those tutorials will be more concise um, and also uh, I also provide the process that in right minor and also the, the data that I used uh, so if you're interested you can check my YouTube channel or you can check my uh, github repository so the data we're going to use for this lab is called house press raw data okay and you can just hit download and that is an excel file uh, so that will be downloaded into my uh, download folder 
Okay. And now let's go back to the uh, right minor. So remember that uh, we can use read Excel operator to load the Excel file into right minor. Um, so before we start, let's create a new uh, folder we call lab2 so that we are we are going to save the, all the process of all the data into this lab2 folder. Uh, so if you remember, we can use the read Excel file that operator okay uh, to uh, load the data and also into right minor and also save that into right minor format however um the right minor also has a a tool that called turbo prep so that is similar to the tableau prep so that is used to clean the data and also is used to um mainly for the data cleaning so let's see how that look like uh, so before I start, we need to load the data. So let's say we want to import the data. And that's in my computer and download folder. So I go to uh, this PC and also downloads. OK, so that's the raw data. You can see that it's similar interface that we did the last week. So all the rows and also all the columns. And here you can check the data type. So the ID is integer, so that's fine. But you can also change the data type or the data rows. Um, and also price are the integers, uh, bedrooms, number of the bedrooms, and also number of the bathrooms. Uh, if you see a question mark, so that means um, uh, that data for that record is missing. So that cell is missing. And also the host type, which is nominal uh, date type, and also the lot size. Oh, you can see there are a lot of zeros in the lot size. OK, so they are not missing values. They are just simply zeros, uh, which still are not good. And the house that's been built, uh, you can see it is not uh, as an integer. Okay, so this is the year data, so which is now recognized as integer, uh, which is fine because we only have the year information, uh, and also area, so that is the size of the house. Okay, and that is also recognized as integer. Uh, we can see we do have, we also have some missing values. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, so where do we want to save the data? So let's save our imported data into our lab2 folder. And then we go to finish. All right. So now we go to this interface of the uh, right minor Tableau prep. Uh, I, I really like this uh, tool. So uh, this is a great tool for data cleaning. OK, so first you can notice that for each single column and there is a histogram. OK, remember that in the lecture we said histogram shows the distribution of single variable. So you can see that histogram. And by just looking at those histograms, so you may notice that, OK, for IDs, so they have unique values all because all the IDs are different. OK, so we have a lot of unique values. Uh, the price is, is, is something like a normal distribution. OK, uh, and the number of the bedrooms uh, bathrooms, house type. So house type, because those are the categorical data, so this is not a histogram, but instead it is a bar chart. Okay, It just shows that the number of the records in different category. And a lot of size, and you can see there's a, a lot of values that in one category. So uh, if we select that lot size and right click, and we can see more details. OK, and we can see a lot of values that are in this range. OK, are in this range. Uh, and also here, the house being built. So we can see a lot of houses that are, are new houses. And also area, uh, number of days that are on the website. So those house records, that number of days that are selling on the website. And how many views they have re received. And also, 
if the host has an HOA, HOA fee. Okay, so those are the histograms or the bar chart, which is very nice. Secondly, you will see that those are some colors. Okay, uh, so for example, for the number of bedrooms, there are a lot of red color bar. And for the price, we have a lot of blue color bar. So what does those color mean? So those color indicate the data quality. Okay, the data quality. So if you check the uh, instruction, uh, you can check how the Tableau defines the data quality. So if you have missing values and also infinite values, so the number of those values uh, were, in, were represented in the red bar. So if you have a lot of missing values or infinite values, so you will have a very long red bar. If you have a lot of values that look like IDs, so that means a lot of different unique values, then you will have a long blue bar. And if you have a lot of values that are the same values, okay, so they are not missing, but they are same values, they, that will be shown as gray. Okay, otherwise, those are considered valid values, and those, those are greens. Okay, so this definition is very arbitrary, but this definition is also very, very useful. Okay, so let's look at the first one. So first one, ID, and you can see, it has a very long blue bar, so that means a lot of values that they are different because that means that it has very high IDness. And for the price, you can see we have a lot of also blue bars. That means because the price are different and we have some similar prices. So we have uh, green bars and also we have some very different prices. So we have those green bars. Uh, for the bedroom and also bathrooms, you can see we have a red bar. So red bar is normally is where I need, I will pay attention to. So that means we have either missing values or we have either infinite values. So now you can see on the screen, we have 40%, more than 40% of the date records that are missing. Okay, uh, so this indicate a very uh, significant uh, date quality issue. So that means we have a lot of missing values. And that is similar on the number of bathrooms. So they are all missing. We have a lot of missing values. And also on the other two uh, columns. OK. So let's say what. Uh, so what are those missing values? Well, they are missing values. So if you right click, you can sort your data. OK, you can transform the data and so clean our data directly, but we will see that we will see that one later. So let's say we sort the data. And now you can see a lot of records that are missing. They have missing values in the bedrooms. They also are missing values in the bathrooms. And there are also those missing values in those two columns. OK. Uh, so now I think now we have very clear idea that we should uh, you can exclude those values, those missing values from your data set, because if you want to do a training model, you cannot have missing value. So missing value will be a problem. Or you can separate the column so you can use those missing values uh, as uh, for future use. For example, if you want to predict the number of bedrooms and you can use those as uh, uh, to, to do for predictions. Uh, so here I want what I want to do is that I want to fill out those missing values. So I can go to transform. OK. And so since now I have selected this number of bedrooms, so I can do a lot of stuff like I can change the name of the column. I can change the type. I can just remove this column. I can copy, create a new column. And I can fill out the data. So let's say I want field and I just want to keep the data that is not missing. OK, I want to keep the data that is not missing and hit apply. OK, so this is more like the database. So once you hit apply and it will give you a preview that how the data look like. You can see once you filled out the missing value from the number of the bedrooms, the bathrooms year that has been built, uh, 
all the missing records are also being filled out. So that's pretty great. Although we do have a few uh, missing values on the areas. So we do have those two. Um, so let's fill out that one as well. So let's fill out those two records. So it's not missing and we hit apply. OK, and now you can see we don't have any missing records. And if you are happy with that, you can commit this change. So now that will apply the change to your data. Uh, if you are not happy, you can always cancel that. So let's say we want to commit the change. OK, uh, so now we don't have any missing values. So at least as, as far as I can tell. Um, here next, let's say we want to handle um, the zero values. So if I, again, if I sort, you can see there are a lot of zero values on this lot size column, which is not good. And we may also have some zero values in the price. Okay, so we have rank, one record that has zero price, which is not right. And we have a lot of zeros on this lot size. Okay, uh, so here what I want to do is that I want to fill out that single record that has zero price. Uh, but for the lot size, because if I fill out the lot size have, uh, that are zeros, I will lose a lot of information on the other columns. So I would just want to simply remove this entire column. Okay, I just want to simply remove this entire column because I think this is not important. Um, and also, if I filled out all those zeros, that will be a problem. OK, so let's go to transform one more time. And here I want to remove all those lot size. OK, so remove. Apply. OK, so now you can say the lot size column is gone. Uh, for this price, I can fill out uh, the zero. So let's say go to filter. I say it does not equal to zero. And I hit apply. And it looks nice. Uh, you can see we have zeros on HOA fees. And that is probably right because some houses, they, they, uh, the community may not have an HOA fee. OK, so that might be right. And now I just commit my transformation. OK, so that is a basic uh, data cleaning. You can see it's, it's, it's pretty easy. And they also have the other, other function, like you can split or you can replace. OK, split and also replace can only work for the categorical data. OK, so you can split some specific, uh, specific strings or you can replace some values. Um, okay. Uh, date cleaning. <laughs> okay. Uh, so date cleaning has some uh, other functions um, that can help you to clean the data. Um, uh, so let's, for example, they have the auto cleaning process. Uh, so that is also very useful. So that means instead of doing those date cleaning that we just did manually, so you can also try this auto cleaning. Uh, we'll, we'll try that one later on this semester. Or you can just simply remove those records with low qualities. OK. So that's how they define the low quality. So if the column that have a lot of IDs, ID needs, OK. And if they have a lot of data that are similar, values are similar, or if they have a lot of missing values, and those columns will be removed. And you can set those threshold. Uh, you can also remove the highly correlated columns. So if you remember that uh, if the two features or two columns are highly correlated, um, so and we may just need to keep one feature because the other one, the another one, that those highly correlated may not help a lot in our uh, models, in our machine learning models. Uh, we also have other feature like you can uh, For example, you can normalize the data. 
And if you have missing values, you can also replace those missing values. So instead of just filled out those missing values, you can also replace those missing values. Uh, for example, you can give them average values instead of the just simply replacing those values. Uh, you can also do the dummy coding. Okay, so you can create dummy variables, so that just give you numbers for each category. Uh, you can remove those duplicated values uh, if you think that is necessary. Uh, you can also do the PCA, so principal component analysis. Uh, so we will also talk about that one later in this semester. Uh, so again, the data cleaning is also very, very powerful. And uh, you can try that uh, on your own, so if you like. Uh, OK, uh, now let's see the generate. So for example, here uh, we know that we have the price for the entire house and we know the size of the house. But we know that one important feature of the house on the real estimate market is called the unit price. OK, so the unit price is a price divided by the size of the house. So however, in the in the current data set, we don't have that feature. So fortunately, we can generate generate a new column um, uh, to have that feature. So we click Generate, and we type the name of the new column, uh, Unit Price. And now we can do the calculation. So we can drag different columns here. So for example, that is Price divided by the area. OK, the price by, divided by its area. And there are also a lot of other very powerful functions, like they have the logic, logical comparisons, and uh, fuzzy matching, etc. So those are very, very powerful functions. And also you can create the constant, like true, false, pi, missing values, etc. OK, so here I just want to create a new column called new unit price. And uh, you can update to see the preview. So the purple one is a new column that is going to generate. And blue ones are the columns that are involved in this calculation. So you can just have a preview and it looks like nice. And then I just commit that generate. And now you can see here uh, we have the unit price. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, for the other uh, function like pivot, so yeah, you can do the group by uh, by different columns, and you can do pivot to the table. So that is similar uh, in Excel or in Tableau. Uh, you can also merge data. So if you have data that have different resources, you can choose the data to merge. You can either append the data or you can join the data. OK, so you have data from different resources. So that is also available. Um, you can bring the data, the clean data directly to the auto model to do the, to do the machine learning. Uh, so we will do that later uh, this semester. Uh, you can also create different visualizations. Uh, we will see that one later immediately. Um, and also you can create a process. So creating process means that all the data cleaning operators that you did manually will now be saved as a process. And you can save that process data cleaning. Uh, so the nice thing to do that, to save that as a process is, uh, for example, if you have a similar data set that need to go through the same uh, data cleaning process and you don't need to repeat those process again manually. So you can just bring the data, replace the data to the, this operator and, and Tableau will clean the data in the same way. So following the same process. So that is nice. Uh, History. So history keeps all the process that you did, like filters, remove, and also generators. So that allow you to go back, to go back or roll back to any steps that you have done. So um, Tableau wrap prep also has this feature, so that's very nice. 
So if you did something wrong, and you can always go back. OK. Um, and also, of course, you can export the data, so the clean data, rename, et cetera. Uh, so next, let's see how we can create visualizations. So we go to the charts. OK. Uh, it's, it's very nice that RepMiner always provides those um, pre-built charts that you can create a very uh, pretty visualizations um, within a few click. Okay, uh, so let's say we want to create uh, a histogram that shows a unit price. So let's choose the histogram. And the value will be the unit price. So we remove the area, but we put the unit price and we hit apply okay so now we have a histogram and we can see most house their unit price is uh, below two hundred dollars per square feet okay and um, you can also customize your uh, visualization like you can add colors based on house type you can define the number of the beans on this histogram. So depending on the type of the charts that you are creating, uh, so you can customize your visualization. And you also you can give different change to the style. And finally, uh, you can export your histogram. So if you click this uh, button and you can export your current histogram into different format, so let's say we export at the JPEG. And I'm going to put that one into my download folder. OK. So that's lab to the first chart. So now you can see in my download folder, I have this histogram, uh, this exported image. So that's pretty nice. OK, uh, so let's say we want to see the, the distribution of the house unit price in different house types. So of course, you can see give the a different house type a color. OK. And all what you can do is that you can try to create um, a bell curve. So that means that we are trying to fit the data into a, a normal distribution. And then we can compare the distribution of those uh, the unit price um, in different house type. And we can see for the single family home, the mean value is, is the highest. So that means the single family home is the most expensive. And also, it is also the, the widest. So that tells us that the, for the single family home, the unit price has a, has a huge range, so it has a high variation. OK, uh, so that is a bell curve showing the distribution of the house unit price in different house types. And of course, you can also export that image. Uh, let's try the scat plot. So, so here we want to see the, uh, the relationship between the price and uh, the number of the bathrooms. OK, uh, so you can see that that is the price and also next is the number of the bedrooms. Uh, actually, I should put the bedrooms on the X. And let me put the price on the Y. OK, uh, so you can see here there's a general trend that when you have more bedrooms, the price will be higher. So <laughs> that is pretty obvious because when you have more bedrooms, the house will be bigger. So the price will be higher. OK, so that's a scat plot. Um, as I mentioned in the lecture, we can also create a scat plot matrix. OK, uh, so that means we can 
see the relationship among more than two variables. So let's see bedroom, bathroom, number bedroom, bathroom, and also price. Okay, so now you can see the relationship between price and also number bedrooms and also bathrooms. So normally you can see that uh, when you have more bedrooms or when you have more bathrooms, the price will be higher. Uh, you can also see the relationship between bathrooms and also bedrooms. So you can see when you have more bathrooms, you will also have uh, more bedrooms. Okay, so that can show you some relationships. Um, you can also show the histogram for each single um, variable. So here we have the histogram for the price. Uh, here we have the histogram for the bedroom. And also we have the histogram for the bathrooms. Okay, uh, so personally, I, I like scatterplot uh, matrix so that I can, I can see the relationship among multiple variables uh, very easy. Okay, um, so lastly, let's try to create a line chart. So let's say we want to create a line chart. And in the line chart, we want to see that how the average unit price change over time. So let's bring all those variables back and let's bring the unit price to our chart. Okay, and we want to aggregate the data. So we want to see the group by the house being built and we want to see the average and all you can see the median, okay, a mode. Those are, the, those are all the central tendencies. So let's see average. Okay, so on average, we can see there was a, uh, a peak that in uh, 2032, and then we can see the unit price is pretty stable in this range, 100 to 200 dollar per square feet. And there was a increase in 2017, and then there was a drop in 2018. Okay, uh, so that is a line chart to show the trend of the uh, average unit price.